Hey CrossCart fans, so enough of you have commented that uh, this ride height might be a little bit low for your flavor. Well, this is just my CrossCart ride height. All of my carts have two separate modes, two separate ride heights, two sets of tires, so that I can pretty much take them anywhere. My preference is the low, you don't have a chance of flipping it, you can brake hard, you can accelerate hard, you can drift, donut, spin out with full confidence that you're in total control. Who doesn't like that? But also, I want to get into some trail riding. I wanna be able to take this thing anywhere. Now, this is a VF1, which stands for Variable Frame Cart, first of its kind, first of KJ Racing's kind, I don't know. Just a name. <laughs> so today, we're gonna to jack this thing up. Uh, I'm shooting for about 15 inches of ground clearance. We'll see if we get there. We'll make the suspension nice and smushy so it can take trails well. Now, obviously, you could just get separate shocks that are longer, have more travel, have this exact spring race that you want, the damping that you want. But these are budget builds. I have $400 into the suspension on this thing, which is unheard of for how well these things handle. So I'm going to use the stock suspension, and maybe we'll get some smushy trail riding suspension so let, let's see what we come up with let's have at it so it all starts right here this is our stock setup and i have two positions for it the inner position is going to give it another two inches maybe three inches of ground clearance and it's going to make the shocks a little smushier for rough tracks rough rally tracks uh, how i have it positioned now it's as low as it can be it's as stiff as it can be but we still have another inch of preload, which means we still have another 120 pounds of spring rate that we can increase this by. If you're confused by that, look up spring math. I'm not gonna explain it in this video. So essentially to increase ride height, we move this inboard, but moving it inboard also makes these springs less effective. So instead of making two mounts up here, which would keep the spring rate constant, but change the ride height, I'm going to dual purpose it and make it stiff for racing outboard, soft for trail riding inboard, but add the ride height. Now there's this big long tube you can work with, the vertical for the engine mount slash suspension that you can add different positions to to get ride height mixed with spring rate. Now, if you're like me, you're on a budget and you buy used stuff. So the original stock Polaris has these two shock bearings and it's basically a spacer that is M10 or 3 8 depending on what you get. And there's two rubber bushings. These rubber bushings, if they're old, will just break apart. So I will buy shock bearing replacement kit. And these are fantastic. Shock bearing kit, that's what they're called. They're called a shock bearing kit. There's your part number. And they're very cool. They come with two new rubber bushings. And instead of two pieces where you lose one immediately, it's just a single piece for the same size bolt. And you just press these in with a vise, hammer, press, and you have brand new shocks, brand new bushings. It's awesome. So I've got the shocks pulled, and like I said, the idea is to go to this cross member here. Looks like it's gonna be an additional five inches, but we'll see where that goes. Jack it up, 
Let's see what kind of altitude we can get. Okay, so the brackets from the low rider suspension are hitting the wheels. Nope, not there yet. Let's pull the wheels off. All right, so let's look at what we did. My camera cut out, battery went dead, and you guys missed all this fun. But it's pretty simple. I jacked it up until the axle started to bind, and then I lowered it back down an inch or two just for a safety buffer. I put the shock in its stock upper location, I hung it down, and I figured out where to put an additional cross member on the upper A-arm to mount a shock at that exact location. Now, we know the angles of the notches for the rear A-arms because they're in the plans. I just copied the same ones. I think it's 16.2 and 42.5 for the back ones. So now we have shocks. They're further inboard on the A-arm, so they're gonna be softer. And now it's just as simple as doing the same thing to the front. Here's the stock location. I've got it hanging from the upper location, and I'm just gonna find the length of crossbar to make. I'll get this brake line out of the way, obviously. The front A-arms are not in the plans, so we gotta find those angles. They're probably gonna be pretty similar, so I'm just gonna get a piece of flat bar. I'm gonna line it up with a square, however that looks. Get my handy protractor. Get this dog on shock out of the way. So it looks like about 15 degrees. 15 for the front and 25 for the back. Now the tricky part is figuring out how wide to make our cross member or shock mounting bar or whatever you want to call it. It's so fun to name this stuff. <laughs> so we want to come about right here. Now I usually try to cut these a little long. So it's a radius mount, so if I put this at an angle, it should rotate around it and keep about the same length. So now I'm just mark on the A-arm. Then I'll just measure the inside between these two points. So now it's just like you're notching anything else. I'm gonna score a line to mark center line of my tube. So my notch is stand line. Now we're not going to have cut wrappers, so we don't know how far to go in, but we do have our end limits and I'm going to do five and a half. I'm going to come in just an eighth of an inch. So my hole saw has something to bite. Then I'll measure from that five and a half inches. And this side was 15 degrees, and this side was 25 degrees. So I'm gonna cut 15 and 25, and I'm gonna make sure they're coming the opposite way. And I'm gonna swap these, because since I'm gonna cut the tube in half, in half a lesser angle is gonna be easier on my notcher. There we go. Looks like my calibration is a little off on my notcher. Got one ear longer than the other, but should be okay. Now we want these pieces to be equal. So you can do short side to short side or long side to long side. And just make a mark that'll help you reference it. Double check it with a measurement and then cut a matching piece for the other side. All right, let's check it out. We'll slot our piece in 
it looks like it lines exactly up where we had it marked. Now this first one, I didn't change it for the 15 degree, so you'll see a little gap here. I can weld that gap, no big deal. Slide our tabs on it. It could maybe be a 16th less, but man, that, that fits really well. Now you're gonna want these tubes the same exact length. You want them to fit on the A-arms the same exact way so that your shocks maintain balance left and right. So let's check out our other side. And that side is fitting tighter. But there's clearly more force on the left side than the right. So I might just trim it up on the grinder. I have this all fitted up in place. There's a little bit of pressure on it, holding it in place. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to just tack it in place to check it out. Now I suppose the right way to do this would be to peel all the paint off the A-arms before I weld it, but I'm just going to use this weld to melt that paint and go right through it and weld it. A little bit lazy. Don't, don't be too hard on me. All right. It's time for the best part. Let's jack it way up. That's all my jacks got. That's with two two by fours under the frame too. This thing is a high lifter. There we go. Drop it on down. Look at that. Let's see how squishy this suspension is. Oh, it's squishy. I mean, that's still a ton of clearance, even with it under full sag. Let's get a step ladder to get in this thing. Oh, that's gonna be a smooth ride. It's gonna be very smooth. <laughs> yeah. Let's get this thing out and drive it. Are you kidding me? We'll mess with preload after a test drive just to get a baseline. All right, let's see what we ended up with for ground clearance. We got 13 inches in the back. It'll be 13 in the front too. So 13 inches all around. Yeah, so that's with 23 inch tires. We have 13 inches of clearance with 23 inch tires. You put 28s on there, that's gonna give you two more inches of clearance, two and a half inches more. That'd be 16 inches of clearance. That's awesome. One, two, three, four. Since I built it for her, she will be the one to test drive it. 
Are you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. We're going to give her a little head nod. So that's it, safari mode. I can't wait to get this thing on some trails, see what kind of hills we can climb, what kind of ruts we can get into. Just see it's all around performance just for complete trail riding. I'm so stoked. Please like, subscribe. There's definitely more to come. Thanks for watching.